Hello, this is the large-scale LEGO Star Wars DO droid from The Rise of Skywalker. Let's get right into it. This is one of those pseudo Ultimate Collector Series sets where it comes with the special plaque. It's large-scale. It is for display and not play. And yet, it doesn't get the official UCS designation because, frankly, it's just not big enough and not expensive enough. And they want to keep that designation for the more elite stuff. So we're just gonna take a look at this from some different angles and I'll zoom in on the most important things that you're most interested in, that I was most interested in, that most LEGO fans are most interested in with this. And you'll see that as far as things you can do with this, well, there's very, very little indeed. Let's get right to the most important thing, the wheel. How did they do the wheel? Well, it's a, it's kind of a, oh, moment. If you haven't cheated and seen how it's built, um, I guess I'm going to spoil it for everybody. So if you don't want to be spoiled on that, just move forward like a minute. Essentially, inside of there, you can see the little gray tubes. Well, they aren't the standard flexible tubes. They're the super noodly flexible tubes that are, in fact, hydraulic or rather pneumatic hoses. So these back here are more examples of the same material. It's, I believe it's silicone, like silicone hoses. So inside of there, each one of these curved pieces, these one by four curves, has beneath it a one by two Technic brick with two holes, two Technic pinholes. And then they just have a couple of those hoses going all the way around. And you can see them right there. And ultimately it gets wrapped around a brick-based structure that is nice and round, fortunately. It was the most clever thing about how this was done. And um, then it gets attached into place. These are still movable, so you kind of have to line them up yourself properly. But the skeleton beneath there, or the form, is good. So it looks pretty round. But it is attached to the base. This is completely static. Yes, you can modify anything in LEGO to make it way better. But in this case, the way it's designed is to be static, like this. So the wheel doesn't turn, unfortunately. What does turn on this? What does move? Let's show you a little bit more detail around here. Well, you see the head kind of moving. It's basically on a turntable, and it's done in a very nice way. They've got a little actuator for it that's integrated into the build and into its very design in a, in a good way. It's this little thing right here, a little two by two on the side. Look at that. So there's a tiny gearbox with just a couple of bevel gears that allows you to, to turn this. So that's good. You can kind of bring some life to it. It feels good. It would have felt a lot better if you could actually move the thing around as well. I mean, I guess you can slide it. <laughs> but it's just, you know, it's just not the same. That is a printed piece. Thank goodness. That is a printed piece as well. There for the nose. So that's good. Got to appreciate printed pieces on, you know, fancy sets, especially ones that are made for display only. And you can adjust the angles of these things however you want. But ultimately, that's most of what's here. But there is one other feature. If you come down to here, is it this one? Yeah, it's this one. Turn this one up. Oh, hey, a little bit of remote back and forth action. So you can turn it like that. And then you can look side to side. And then you can turn it like that and look side to side. So it doesn't have a lot of range of motion there. But you know, it's sensible. And it looks kind of cool to have linkages there and again it's all integrated in well you know they don't have any loud things or no stickers with arrows like you could look at this from a distance and think that it's completely static so having the motions is nice but i really wish that it had the ability to spin the wheel even if the whole thing had to be static where you know it was ultimately attached to the base um, without having to rebuild this thing without having to completely modify it yourself it would have been nice to be able to spin this around and that's about that oh well let's look at the plaque there's your plaque that is still a sticker so the two main pieces that are decorated on the model are done with prints but then this big plaque is done with a huge sticker so do be careful with that of course and then it comes with the little mini scaled version of Dio and there's that it's just a single piece of plastic I couldn't really ask for more at this scale for something that's trying to look 
at least semi-realistic, you know, to fit in with minifigs. Anti-stud on the base, hollow stud at the back of the head, so potentially you could use it to attach to other things for some custom work. And the production work on this is fine. You know, the prints are just fine. No complaints there. And I'll show you the top of the head as well. So that's that. Lastly, here are the leftover spare parts, and there's nothing too fancy here. So, am I tired? Am I sick? Have I lost my passion for LEGO? Do I not care about what I'm doing anymore, and now I just do these videos for views? These are the types of suggestions that you'll see from random passers-by on the internet who fancy themselves psychologists at times like this. But the reality is much simpler, much more sensible. I'm just not excited about this thing. It doesn't excite me, especially for $70 US. $70 US. Honestly, I don't feel like the price to part ratio for this one is terrible. Um, I mean, the number is high-ish, a little bit, but it's not that high. Like, I don't expect 10 cents per part, always, <laughs> nowadays, not anymore. Uh, you know, uh, inflation is a thing. And this does have some big pieces. And it does have two exclusive prints, so that's cool. And the, the build, I mean, the build is, is nice, but just the size of it, that doesn't look like $70 worth of stuff for me right there. That doesn't make it worth $70 either. Even at $60, I wouldn't be happy with this for the amount of stuff that I get here. Being kind, like just myself looking at this as a fan of toys and collectibles and Star Wars and even this character here. So that's that's another thing to dispel any any worries about uh, bias from me against the source material. When Dio, the character, was first unveiled as a as a model, you know, as a as a prop, I was like, "Here we go again! Another made for merch, cutesy little droid." And hey, BB-8 sold really well. A lot of people like BB-8, so we're gonna make this one a roller also, but we're gonna make it smaller, and it's gonna have a chipmunk voice, and instead of having a uh, a lighter that comes out of its body to give you a thumbs up. It's going to have like a holographic projection of a heart. It's going to be insufferable. But then I actually saw the movie and Dio was actually cool. It, it, it felt like a character that had a soul. It felt like a character that had a backstory, a background. They, they did, it didn't feel forced. It didn't feel like something that was made for merch. It felt like something that belonged in the Star Wars universe that predated the entire sequel trilogy that yeah had a had a rough life and everything it was different in a very good way so i personally support dio the thing dio the character and i think this is a perfectly fine model yeah i really wish that especially for a price over 50 dollars it had a wheel that could actually be spun even if it even if the whole thing had to be kind of attached to the base and then you could just spin this in place or then you could take it off the base and then even if it didn't roll that well, you could just kind of spin it, like make it work. That would have been cool without having to redo it, without having to customize it. That would have been nice, would have helped with the value. But as it is, it's $70. It's $70. I cannot get excited about this tiny little thing for $70. It just doesn't do enough. That's cool. And I like the linkage right there. And I like the hoses. That's cool. It's kind of above and beyond. Like they didn't need to do that. I could have just had it move like this. And then that's just like a plus beyond that. The design is fine. $70 is not. Simple as that. Oh, let me grab something for you. There we go. So in case you're curious, doesn't scale to this. <laughs> Obviously, it should have been much, 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 much smaller if it was intended to scale to BB-8. And I'm not going to compare value on these. I mean, this thing is solid, 
Technically, it's hollow, hollow in the middle, but it's heavy. There's a lot here, and there were a lot of parts. And yeah, you had to pay more for this, but I'm not, I'm not comparing that. I just wanted to compare the sizes. So for collectors, you know, who might want a Dio to go with their BB-8, that doesn't work here. Because, you, you know, the scale is just way off. You got to do like, what, like that? Something like that? Force some perspective there? Or is it unforced, like the reverse of force perspective? Anyway, you know what I mean? The scale just, that doesn't work either. So there's, there's one other thing that this doesn't have going for it. That's why I'm not excited about this. It costs way too much in my personal opinion, and it's just not that fantastic for what it is. It's fine for what it is, and at $50, I would have been okay with it. 45, oh yeah. 50, okay. 55, okay, whatever. 60, mm, now you're pushing it. You're really pushing it. 65, come on. 70, nope. Just nope. That's all I have to say about it. So, if you are on the fence, if you like the thing, if you like the look of it, like I did, but you don't like the price, but you think you might just bite the, bull, bite the bullet and go for it, but you're not certain about it, you're not certain about the build process, check out one of my build videos. I've got the real-time build that you can just throw on while you're in quarantine, <laughs> doing something else, or working from home. I've got the speed build where you can actually go through it in a single... A single sitting and actually watch it you know if you if you want to be spoiled on on the build process um, it's still going to be interesting i think even if you know how it's built it's still going to be interesting to put together i found the side and the the neck area to be the most interesting stuff here and it, it is also interesting just the shape that's inside of the the tire if you will so all that's cool check out one of the build videos if you want to if that can be helpful to you i hope that this review was helpful to you in some way if my opinions weren't at least seeing the thing. So there you go. Thanks for watching. I will talk to you again soon.